Hello students, today's discussion will be on psychrometric chart. So what is psychrometry? Let me explain you the meaning of psychrometry. It is a study of the air plus water vapor mixture. And in the entire discussion, as far as gate exam is concerned, air plus water vapor mixture should be considered as an ideal gas mixture. Now the psychrometric chart is important for gate chemical as well as gate mechanical point of view. The chart outline is like this. There are some curves. I am not including all the parameters on the psychrometric chart. Only those parameters will be discussed which are important for gate. So the y-axis is having y dash which is called the absolute humidity also known as the specific humidity or simply humidity having the units of kg water vapor per kg dry air and y dash increases from bottom to top. The x-axis shows the drybulb temperature of air vapor mixture and it increases from left to right. Okay. The curves represent percent saturation. So this curve shows 100% saturation or you can say 100% relative humidity. So this curve shows 100% saturation and along this curve everywhere the percent saturation of air vapor mixture is always 100%. And as you go from left to right, the percent saturation decreases. So this line may be 70% saturation. This graph is not to scale, so I am just writing the random values. 50% saturation, 30% saturation and you can say 0% saturation. Fine. Also, there are some slant lines. Even these lines are not perfectly straight and they are also not parallel to each other. So there are lines like this. They are slightly curved, only slightly curved and they are not exactly parallel to each other. So what is the meaning of this line? What it denotes? These are the adiabatic cooling lines. Adiabatic cooling lines. Okay. There are other parameters as well. In the psychrometric chart only, you can also read the enthalpy values, you can also read the humid volume, you can also read the humid heat. So I am not showing all those parameters. Only these parameters I will discuss because these parameters are frequently asked in the examination. Okay. So now suppose I am initially present at this point. So the air vapor mixture denoted by this point, that is point 1. He is having the dry bulb temperature shown by this point and the humidity, the absolute humidity given by this particular point. Okay. Now suppose you are heating the mixture. So what happens when you heat the air vapor mixture in a closed container? Suppose this is a closed container and the closed container contains some values, some uh, molecules of air and some molecules of water vapor. What is the meaning of closed container? No mass can enter the system. No mass can leave the system. And everything is present in the air form, gases form or vapor form. There is no liquid present inside the closed container. Now suppose, if you increase the temperature of this uh, container, what should happen to the absolute humidity of the closed container? This is a very very important concept that as you increase the temperature, the absolute humidity of a closed container always remains same y dash remains same. Fine. What is the reason? Because what is the definition of y dash? It is the mass of water vapor, mass of dry air. So it depends upon the mass. If the mass of the container is not changing, neither of the component is going out of the container, not, none of the component is being added into the container, so the mass is not going to change and definitely therefore the absolute humidity should remain constant. So as temperature increases, the absolute humidity remains constant. What happens to the absolute humidity of the closed container as the temperature decreases? So this increase in temperature is called sensible heating and the decrease in temperature is called sensible cooling. Right? So when temperature decreases, again no mass is getting changed, air mass remains same, water vapor mass remains same, so absolute humidity again remains constant. 
but as you are decreasing the temperature there will be a point after which the water vapor present in the mixture starts condensing the temperature at which the water vapor is on the verge of condensation is called the dew point temperature of the air vapor mixture fine so up to the dew point you are decreasing the temperature now you have reached the dew point the moment you reach the dew point up to that temperature there will be no change in absolute humidity once you further decrease the temperature below the dew point the water vapor starts to condense once it is condensed now it is not present in the water vapor form so it should not be counted for calculating the humidity and after that the absolute humidity of the system decreases fine right? so when the absolute humidity of the system decreases this is called dehumidification and when the absolute humidity of the system increases so how the absolute humidity is going to increase when you add more amount of water molecules or water vapor which is not possible in the case of a closed container fine right? so that is called humidification and dehumidification humidification means increase in absolute humidity of air vapor mixture dehumidification means decrease in absolute humidity of air vapor mixture now as temperature decreases y dash remains same up to the dew point up to the dew point now i'm going to show these two concepts on the psychrometric chart as well suppose the initial position is 1 and you are increasing the temperature so how to show increase in temperature or how to show sensible heating suppose this is point 1 and this point is point 2 now this arrow or this direction shows sensible heating fine and as you can observe that during the process of sensible heating the absolute humidity remains constant at this initial value so there is no change in absolute humidity however let me make this point clear that the percent saturation which is given by these curves as you are going from this point to this point the percent saturation is decreasing so as the temperature increases y dash remains same but the percent saturation decreases which is clear very much clear from this point okay now if you see the sensible cooling if you are, you are present at point 1 and suppose you are decreasing the temperature of air vapor mixture the line must be horizontal so you are decreasing the temperature and suppose you reach this point 2 dash so this arrow or this direction shows sensible cooling right again you can see that during sensible cooling as well y dash remains constant but what happens to percent saturation if you decrease the temperature percent saturation increases most of the students say that if percent saturation is increasing it is humidification operation no humidification means the amount of moisture must increase and that is the specific humidity or the absolute humidity not the percent saturation so when you are increasing or decreasing the temperature during sensible cooling or sensible heating y dash remains same however definitely percent saturation is changing but this is not humidification or dehumidification operation okay now what happens if you cool the mixture air vapor mixture to 100% saturation or uh, as i said to the dew point okay so let me modify this diagram so that i can be i be able to explain it easily uh, the diagram will be let me show this 100% saturation curve slightly more curved like this okay okay suppose you are cooling the mixture and you are cooling it up to this point now what is the final point suppose this point is denoted by 2 double dash what this point represents as you are cooling the mixture the percent saturation increases and ultimately you reach a particular temperature where the percent saturation is at its maximum value which is 100% now this temperature is called dew point temperature so very important line here that what is the value of percent saturation at the dew point or what is the value of relative humidity at the dew point that is 100% so what happens if you further decrease the temperature now you cannot be more than 100% saturated so if you further decrease the temperature you should follow this line i hope you can easily see that what is happening to this you are going from this point to this final point which is 2 triple dash fine now what has happened between this point to this point from 2 double dash to 2 triple dash 
some condensation has been occurred and what happens to the temperature the temperature decreases because i'm going to from right to left what happens to absolute humidity you can see that this point is slightly vertically above than this point okay that's why i modified this final curve so that i'll be easily i can easily explain this point right so this point is slightly above the point two triple dash it means as you are further decreasing the temperature below the dew point more condensation is taking place and the absolute humidity decreases however a very important line once you reach the dew point temperature and then you decrease the temperature you are always 100% saturated fine so this is how you locate the dew point temperature draw a horizontal line and the point where it coincides with 100% saturation line that is called the dew point temperature okay so in any of this process sensible heating or sensible cooling neither humidification nor dehumidification takes place right well, so i hope the concept of sensible heating and sensible cooling and its effect on a y dash and rh relative humidity is clear and you also know how to locate the dew point temperature now what is the purpose of this adiabatic cooling line suppose i am initially present at point 1 and i am drawing a line like this this is a straight line now you must ask that what should be the angle of this line i can draw this line like this or like this what should be the proper angle so when you solve a problem graphically the proper method is to draw this line along the nearest adiabatic cooling line so because this line is having this particular slope so i'll be drawing this adiabatic cooling curve parallel to this slope right now as you are going from point 1 let me call this point as point 3 so now what is happening between point 1 to point 3 can you guess you can easily see that the temperature is decreasing so this must be cooling the humidity is increasing so this must be humidification fine and as you reach the point 3 it is saturated by adiabatic cooling so what happens at this point this point is called adiabatic saturation temperature fine once you reach 100% saturation curve you cannot call some point here suppose i take a point somewhere here you cannot call this as adiabatic saturation temperature you are yet not saturated saturation is always present on this 100% saturation curve this is how you locate the adiabatic saturation temperature fine now you must have studied that for air vapor mixture for air vapor mixture the value of lewis number only for air vapor suppose i change the component suppose i have a mixture of air and benzene then the statement that i am going to make here is not valid for that mixture okay what is the statement that the ratio of heat transfer coefficient by mass transfer coefficient into humid heat is approximately equal to 1 and this ratio is dimensionless and is called lewis number it is called lewis number and the value of lewis number for air vapor mixture is always equal to 1 due to this reason now i am not going into the detailed derivation that the value of lewis number is equal to 1 then what is its conclusion that is detailed derivation let's not go into that if lewis number is equal to 1 it means that the adiabatic saturation temperature and the wet bulb temperature values are identical right so for air vapor mixture always adiabatic saturation temperature and wet bulb temperature will be same so the method for finding adiabatic saturation and wet bulb temperature are identical now if you see this chart you can easily observe that the dry bulb temperature of air vapor mixture is always more than wet bulb temperature which is always higher than the dew point temperature so if you want to make some conclusion then you can write here that dry bulb temperature is always more than wet bulb temperature which is always more than dew point temperature fine there is a special case suppose if air vapor mixture is saturated it is already saturated in that case all these temperatures are same so dvt becomes equal to wbt becomes equal to dpt fine so this is how you locate these three temperatures let us uh, discuss that what is happening in the process 1 2 3 so if you see the process 1 2 3 can you tell me whether it is humidification or dehumidification you can see that from 1 2 3 to 3 is vertically upward one so you are going from 1 to 3 so y dash increases so this process must be humidification and whether it is uh, cooling or heating 
the temperature decreases so therefore humidification and cooling okay you can take a minute and you can think about how to show a process which is cooling and dehumidification fine so i'm making space here on this board so that i can draw the lines suppose uh there is a line so cooling and dehumidification right suppose this line suppose this point is point a and you are going from point a to point b the arrow is from point a to point b now what is the process represented by this arrow first of all it is heating or cooling the temperature here and the temperature here the final temperature is less than the initial temperature so what is this this is cooling what about humidification it is humidification or dehumidification the humidity is decreasing this is higher this is lower so final humidity is less so what this process represents a b process represents dehumidification and cooling so like this you can represent all these process on the psychometric chart dehumidification and cooling fine so if you know how to locate these three temperatures if you know how to draw lines which can represent different process sensible heating sensible cooling humidification cooling dehumidification cooling you can also try to represent humidification and heating and dehumidification and heating by some lines on the psychometric chart so i hope this discussion is going to help you to answer all the theoretical questions on humidification and dehumidification for solving numerical problems definitely you are not going to take the help of psychometric chart because the psychometric chart will not be available in the gate examination but definitely this much of knowledge is definitely required so that you can answer theoretical problems and this much of knowledge is definitely required because the gate exam may frame some kind of questions based on the graphical understanding of the psychometric chart okay so thank you very much i hope this is going to help you a lot in your upcoming exam